Hello, I'm Renner from More Mountains, and welcome to this top-down engine tutorial. Today we're going to focus on minimal scene requirements. So, um, just like in most Unity projects, in the top-down engine, a level is made of a scene. You can add lots of stuff to your scene. It can be walls, enemies, uh, bonuses, stuff like that. It can be huge, it can be really small, that's up to you. But whatever you do, there are a few elements required for the engine to work. The engine includes two examples of minimal scenes, a 3D one and a 2D one. And these scenes can show you the standard conditions, minimal elements. Technically, you could remove more stuff, but they will act as good starting points. So I encourage you to use them. So let's start by having a look at where they are. You'll find them in your top down engine folder inside demo and you'll find a minimal 2d folder minimal 3d one that's where they are and if we open for example the minimal 2d scene and look at how the scene looks you'll see that there isn't much it's basically empty um, but in the hierarchy you'll find a bunch of stuff that you want to keep in in your scene so the first one is the game manager the game manager is a manager responsible for handling basically the game loop uh, it's mandatory in every scene if you want to use most of the game mechanics uh, classes that are included in the engine next we have a sound manager uh, as the name implies it's a central point for playing sounds it's not mandatory you could use native unity apis to play sounds but if you want to take advantage of this manager and what it proposes, which is uh, volume control save and load of these settings stuff like that then you want to keep it in your scene then we have a managers game object which contains even more managers the level manager um, this one is really important because it's in charge of spawning your character inside the level and it will handle basically your level rules uh, that can be the duration of the intro and outro the delay before dying um, the points of entry the checkpoints so really all the rule sets uh, that are locked to your level uh, then you'll find some inventories these are optional, of course, if you don't use the inventories, you can just get rid of them and, and you may even want to replace them with your own inventories. Then we have a time manager, um, optional as well, of course, but if you want to use any ability um, or power that, that uses time control, then you want to use that. It's also responsible for uh, stuff as simple as the pose. Uh, it handles everything that relates to the time scale. So I suggest leaving it here. Uh, and then we have achievement rules if you want to use achievements of course otherwise you can simply remove them next uh, we have the cameras so the engine is built around unity's cinemachine system which in my opinion is the best camera system out there uh, so in most scenes if not all you'll find a cinemachine virtual camera I recommend you look up uh, cinemachine's documentation to learn more about it but otherwise you know you can leave it to the default settings and it's going to follow your character around and pretty much act as you would expect. Next we have a main camera which is being moved by the virtual camera and on it uh, usually you'll find the post-process volume that describes you know um, all the effects bloom, vignette, color grading associated to that. Of course you can get rid of these post-processing volumes if uh, you don't use them. Same goes for the layer over there. Um, and next we have a UI camera that is used to display, you know, stuff like your inventory, your avatar, your health bar, things like that. Um, this is optional. You can, you can remove it. Uh, but if you want to keep it, you'll see that it also contains mobile buttons. It contains your, uh, pause button, which in turn will also act, you know, as a display for the pause splash, which is here. Uh, we've got the desk splash, we've got a flash used to uh, display some, some flashy feedbacks, we've got an FPS counter, stuff like that. So it's a good base, but of course you can remove parts of uh, that or pretty much everything. And next, finally, uh, we have the level which contains a ground, some walls and an initial spawn point over there. And if we pre press play, you'll see that I get spawned at this position and I can move around in this tiny level so uh yeah 
same goes for the minimal 3D scene. We can have a quick look at it. So as you can see, uh, the minimal scene 3D is pretty much a copy of the 2D one, but it's set up to have a 3D camera, uh, not an orthographic one. And if I press play, you'll see that there are a bunch of changes in the UI and stuff like that, but it's more or less the same thing. And now you have a 3D character. So use these scenes as your starting point and um, I'll see you in uh, another video. Bye.